Okay, hello and welcome to a CISSP micromodule. This is on personnel security, module 1.7, and we're going to talk about personnel security policies and procedures. So why are we doing this? Well, the main, the main purpose of having personnel security would be to reduce the risk of insider threat. So you want to prevent things like burglary, fire, vandalism, things like that, and also uh, data exfiltration, and basically anything that an employee on the inside could do, them having access to all of the confidential data and all the company assets. So one of the concepts that they present in the CBK is the screening. We all kind of know what this is, but they talk about several different things. First, they talk about it, they refer to it as a financial profile, but really what they're talking about is a credit check. They check your credit history. They may, they may also do a background check to see if there's any crimes that you've committed. Uh, potential candidates. There's also things such as a reference check that they can do and there's also employment history checks that they can do. They can check various databases and, and uh, public databases and private databases. A couple of problems with the reference checks that they talk about in the in the common body of knowledge are uh, first and foremost honesty because of course you have the people that you're getting references from who may not be 100% honest and you also have the individual themselves who gave you the reference names and numbers so you're not that's that's always one of the worst ways to check a, a uh, some it's one of the worst ways to screen a potential employee hiring is the next topic and this for this you basically want to have a job description that is very detailed in terms of what the employee is going to be doing this is going to dictate how the employee behaves with the workload and it can also help in things such as litigation. So your hiring manager should be the one who works with human resources to write the job description. The manager is the one who knows the job and the HR person is the one who knows the laws related to that job. Things like onboarding, you want to train the employee, you want to provision their access, you want to get them up to speed in terms of what their responsibilities are. You want to train them on any laws that apply to their position. And the main thing here with onboarding is that you want to follow a defined process. For termination, the main thing here is also that you want to have a defined process. The employee handbook, that's something that this basically dictates how everyone is going to behave in the organization. So this is your policies and procedures that surround things like you might have a no drinking at work provision in the employee handbook. Maybe this is going to dictate how you talk to people and maybe this is again this is going to dictate how you behave it's such as uh, treating people with dignity or, or respect in the workplace. An employment contract is something that's enforceable. It's legally enforceable. Uh, so, so there you have it. That's uh, something a little more strong, stronger than a job duty. The non-disclosure agreement, we've all, we all have those, that basically is something that you agree to, basically saying that before, not before, I think I meant to say during employment here, sorry about that. So during your employment contract or your employment, term of your employment, you're going to agree not to disclose confidential information or sensitive information or any, anything that, that, could, that could harm the company or the organization. And you're going to, that, that agreement is enforceable even after your employment ends with that organization. So some concepts around vendors, contractors, and consultants. Basically, you can withhold payment if they do not do their job duties. They might have some unique accounts or you might have uh, some, some, they call them distinct accounts. For example, you might have the person's email address with the word consultant or contractor in the, embedded in the email address or maybe some kind of metadata or tag on there that shows that they're a consultant or a vendor. You might have special escort requirements, escort requirements such as they always have to be with somebody at a certain level or an employee, whatever it might be. And you might give them unique badges, different colored badges or Maybe there's a stamp on their ID badge that, that shows that they're a vendor so you can identify them quickly. Or maybe they even wear different outfits than everybody else. An acceptable use policy, this is basically how we as employees are going to use the company or the organization assets. So we need to, one of the key things is that we need to notify employees that we're monitoring them. And so you want to use, <clears throat> a lot of times you want to use this language that says you shall have no expectation of privacy. I know that, I remember that was a big one in the Sean Harris. MP3s that she was 
saying how that's that's actually a legal phrase that you want to use that that shows that the employees have no expectation of privacy when they're working at your and they're using your assets even if they're working at home and they're using a company laptop then that you know they have they need to be made aware that they have no expectation of privacy while they're using that device so the next concept is privacy policy and the privacy policy you're basically going to have two versions you're going to have the internal version for your employees which basically says uh, all our data is confidential or maybe we have the different classifications so don't divulge it protect it encrypt it blah 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 all that stuff this is for the employees and then you're going to have an external policy that's going to be available on your website and this applies to the general public or people who either use your website or people who are going to come and use your services as always thanks for watching if you want some really good practice questions head on over to cissprep.net and sign up I believe we're going to leave the price at five dollars until friday at which time it's going to increase a little bit probably i'm not sure i can't really say yet we're still trying to decide but uh thanks for watching have a great day